In this invited review article from Dr. Samir Raniga and colleagues from Oman and the United States, the authors review the imaging approach to vascular injuries resulting from high-energy pelvic trauma. In their introduction, the authors remind us that the majority of pelvic fractures result from motor vehicle collisions. They review two pelvic ring injury classifications, Young Burgess and Tile, followed by the author's whole body CT protocol employed to evaluate arterial, venous, or osseous sources of bleeding associated with pelvic fractures. What follows is an extensive review of the pelvic arterial anatomy using figures and movies to illustrate the four major obturator, internal pudendal, inferior gluteal, and superior gluteal arteries, and two minor pelvic arterial branches of the internal iliac artery as illustrated in figure two. Figures three through eight demonstrate these arteries and their vascular territories as seen on CT pelvic angiography. Axial CT angiogram at the level of the greater sciatic foramen shows localization and visualization of the four major pelvic arteries. From anterior to posterior, they are the obturator, purple arrow, internal pudendal, yellow arrow, inferior gluteal, blue arrow, and superior gluteal, red arrow, arteries. Figure 4a, axial CT angiogram in a 35-year-old man shows the right iliolumbar artery, yellow arrows, arising from the posterior division of the internal iliac artery and following a horizontal outward trajectory anterior to the sacral ala. It bifurcates at the pelvic inlet level into the iliac, red arrows, and lumbar, green arrows, branches. The iliac artery is seen anterior to the iliacus muscle, and the lumbar artery runs vertically anterior to the sacral ala on the left side. Figure 5a. Axial CT angiogram in a 32-year-old man shows the lateral sacral artery as it descends ventral to the sacrum and lateral to the sacral foramina. Small branches are seen to enter into the sacral foramina, arrows. Movie 1. Three-dimensional illustration shows the internal iliac artery and its important branches. Movie 2. The anatomy of the superior gluteal artery. Axial maximum intensity projection sine CT of the pelvis in the craniocaudal direction in a 31-year-old man shows colored arrow that follows the course of an artery that arises from the posterior division, lies anterior inferior to the sacroiliac joint, curls under the greater sciatic foramen, and exits the pelvis above the piriformis muscle and follows a superior concave arch-like trajectory. Movie 3, the inferior gluteal artery anatomy. Axial maximum intensity projection sine CT of the pelvis in a craniocaudal direction in a 31-year-old man shows a colored arrow that follows the course of an artery arising from the anterior division in a downward and outward trajectory posterior to the internal pudendal artery. It exits the pelvis along the internal pudendal artery beneath the piriformis muscle, above the sacrospinous ligament, and posterior to the ischial spine. Movie 4. The internal pudendal artery. Axial maximum intensity projection pelvic sine CT in the cranial caudal direction in a 31-year-old man shows a colored arrow that follows the course of the artery on the right side, arising from the anterior division of the internal iliac artery. The vessel travels in a downward and outward trajectory, remains anterior to the inferior gluteal artery, and exits the pelvis through the greater sciatic foramen, beneath the piriformis, 
then curls back by sweeping around the sacrospinous ligament into the pelvis. Movie 5. The Anatomy of the Obturator Artery. Axial maximum intensity projection pelvic cine CT in the craniocaudal direction in a 31-year-old man shows a colored arrow that follows the course of the right obturator artery, arising from the anterior division of the internal iliac artery, running in a distinct straight downward and forward trajectory along the pelvic rim, and exiting the pelvis at the upper border of the obturator foramen. The article then addresses the association between pelvic fracture patterns and location and arterial bleeding. For example, posterior pelvic ring fractures are associated with injury to the gluteal, iliolumbar, and sacral arteries, as seen in Figure 10. Figure 10a, axial CT image in a 32-year-old man at the level of the sacral ala, shows combination injuries of the iliolumbar and lateral sacral arteries and hematomas in the right iliopsoas and erector spinae muscles with sacroiliac joint disruption. Figure 10b, axial CT image in a 35-year-old man shows combination injuries of the superior and inferior gluteal arteries and a pelvic gluteal intramuscular hematoma with active contrast extravasation and an LC fracture. Acetabular fractures injure the obturator and inferior gluteal arteries. Figure 11a, axial CT image in a 45-year-old man at the level of the acetabulum shows an obturator artery injury, a left acetabular fracture, and a territorial hematoma in the obturator internus muscle. Figure 11b, axial CT image in a 35-year-old man at the level of the acetabulum shows obturator and inferior gluteal arterial combination injuries, right acetabular fractures, and territorial hematomas around the obturator internus, gluteal muscle, right hip joint, and greater sciatic foramen. Anterior pelvic ring fractures injure the internal pudendal and obturator arteries. Figure 12a, axial CT angiogram at the level of the pubic symphysis shows an internal pudendal artery injury, active arterial extravasation, and pubic symphysis injuries. Figure 12b, axial CT image in a 55-year-old man at the level of the acetabulum shows combination injuries of the obturator and internal pudendal arteries, right acetabular and ischiopubic rami fractures, and territorial hematomas around the right hip joint and the ischiorectal fossa. Figure 13 in the article summarizes these fracture sites and resulting arterial bleeding sources. Table 2 provides a summary of pelvic fracture patterns the CT and radiographic findings associated with each pattern, the vascular territory involved, and the location of the resultant hematoma. The direct CT signs of arterial injury include abrupt narrowing of an artery, seen in intimal injury with thrombosis, vasospasm, or intramural hemorrhage, intraluminal linear filling defects, as seen with dissection, focal outpouching, as in a pseudoaneurysm, active contrast extravasation reflecting transmural injury and transection, arterial cutoff or non-visualization indicating thrombosis or transection, and early opacification of the veins in the arterial phase, indicative of arteriovenous fistula. Indirect or soft signs of vascular injury on CT include loss of clear perivascular fat planes, perivascular hematoma, or hematoma in the vascular territory. Figures 14 through 16 illustrate the various findings. In figure 14, arterial wall irregularity on CT correlates with angiographic findings of arterial dissection. Table 3 provides a summary 
of CT differentiation of active arterial bleeding, active venous bleeding, and pseudoaneurysm formation. An active venous bleed is characterized by extravasation of contrast on venous phase imaging, which is not present on arterial phase scans. Figure 17 shows a typical example. Pitfalls that may lead to misdiagnosis of pelvic vascular injury may be due to improper technique, patient-related factors, or artifacts. Bone fragments may mimic vascular injury but can be distinguished from bleeding on multi-phase scans. Figure 19 shows an example. In the final section of the paper, the impact of MDCT on management of pelvic vascular injury is reviewed. The authors point out that in hemodynamically unstable patients lacking hemoperitoneum on FAST scans, digital subtraction angiography and embolization may still be employed in the absence of active contrast extravasation, as this may be absent in 20 to 40 percent of patients when compared to angiography. In a hemodynamically stable patient with active bleeding on CT, the indications to perform DSA and angioembolization vary and depend on various factors, including the size of contrast extravasation, typically a diameter greater than 6 millimeters, the presence of a large pelvic hematoma, displaced fractures of the obturator ring and greater sciatic notch with fracture gap greater than or equal to 5 millimeters, and the degree of pubic symphysial diastasis. Angioembolization is also recommended in patients with pseudoaneurysm formation, arteriovenous fistula, and vessel truncation to avoid the risk of delayed bleeding. For venous or osseous bleeding, temporary stabilization of the pelvic ring by a pelvic binder, external fixation device, or pelvic C-clamp will minimize pelvic hematoma volume, allowing clots to stabilize and tamponade.